In this lesson, we are going to learn about Azure Managed Identities. Let us start with understanding Azure AD Managed Identity. A common challenge when building cloud application is managing the credentials in your code for authenticating to cloud services. Keeping the credentials secure is an important task. Ideally, the credentials never appear on developer workstations and aren't checked into source control. Azure Key Vault provides a way to securely store credentials, secrets, and other keys. But your code must authenticate to Key Vault to retrieve them. The Managed Service Identities or MSI feature in Azure Active Directory solves this problem. This feature provides Azure services with an automatically managed identity in Azure AD. You can use the identity to authenticate to any service that supports Azure AD authentication, including Key Vault, without providing any credentials in your code. This diagram illustrates how a managed identity works with an Azure Virtual Machine. First, Azure Resource Manager receives a request to enable the system assigned managed identity on a virtual machine or create a user assigned managed identity and assign it to a virtual machine. Then the Azure Resource Manager creates a service principle in the Azure AD for the virtual machine identity. The service principle is created in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription. Then the Azure Resource Manager configures the identity on the virtual machine. It updates the Azure Instance Metadata Service Identity Endpoint with the service principal client ID and certificate. After the VM has an identity, use the service principal information to grant the virtual machine access to Azure resources. To call Azure Resource Manager, use role-based access control in Azure AD to assign the appropriate role to the virtual machine service principal. Then your code that's running on the VM can request a token from two endpoints that are accessible only from within the virtual machine. Then your code makes a call to Azure AD to request an access token. And your code sends the access token on the call to a service that supports Azure AD authentication. You can enable a system assigned managed identity directly on the Azure service instance. Azure creates an identity for the instance in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription of the instance. Credentials are provisioned onto the instance after the identity is created. The lifecycle of a system assigned identity is directly linked to the Azure service instance that it's enabled on. Azure automatically deletes the credentials and the identity in Azure AD when the instance is deleted. An Azure standalone resource can create a user assigned managed identity. Through a create process, Azure creates an identity in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription in use. After the identity is created, you can assign the identity to one or more Azure service instances. And Azure manages the lifecycle of a user assigned identity separately from the lifecycle of Azure Service Instance to which it's assigned. So what are the types of managed identities? Internally, managed identities are service principles of a special type, which are locked and are only be used with Azure resources. When the managed identity is deleted, the corresponding service principle is automatically removed. This table highlights some of the key differences between the two types of managed identities, system assigned and user assigned. So what are the use cases for managed identities? Your code can use a managed identity to request access token for services that support Azure AD authentication. Azure takes care of rolling the credentials that are used by the service instance. First, Create a web application by using Azure CLI. Next, run the identity assign command to create the identity for this application. When creating a container instance by using Azure CLI, you can specify whether to create a system assigned managed identity along with the resource. 
Alternately, a container that was created by using Azure CLI can use a user-assigned managed identity that was created ahead of time. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about API management. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.